Hey everybody, this is Anthony and I am back again. I am actually going to make a video today that is going to answer one of the questions in the comments. So somebody posted a question here, uh, a gentleman named Haobo Ma, asking how do you select certain data to display from the Google Sheet using this API approach? So for those of us that have never seen any of these episodes before, then you're going to probably want to catch up on Google Sheets API Read Data Part 1 and 2. And essentially what this does, it allows you to have a Google Sheet full of data and then display that information in a web page. There's also a video that teaches you how to push data back to your Google Sheet. And now we're going to go ahead and show you how to select certain data. Before, it was pulling all the data from the sheet and putting it on the web page. Now we're just going to be more selective of the data that we want to use. All right, cool. So I'm going to do this. I've already got it running here, but I'm going to do this in the, a fashion of kind of like teach to fish rather than just uh, do it for you. So with that, we're going to go to Google first. Now, if you go to Google and you type in Google Sheets API, this top one here is going to take you to a page where on the left-hand side, you'll see references. And then on the far left, you'll see where it says spreadsheets.values. Now, this is the same section, subsection that we used last time. And last time we used the get. And if you look at our, our old code, it was under this one here, I believe. We used the .get method of the Google API. All right, so this was our old code. And again, if you're not... If you don't have this, we built this in a previous show, but the .get is going to change from get to batch get. And essentially what that does is it allows an individual to pull multiple ranges of data and display that in their web page rather than just having a single range. Before we had the .get, which pulled everything from sheet one. Now we're going to do a batch get and just select specific data. Cool, so now that we are on the batch get page, if I scroll down to the bottom, one thing that you'll need to learn how to do is figure out the syntax of this and how this works at the bottom. This here is basically an easy way for you to test and make sure that you're able to pull your data successfully by just putting in a couple bits of information. So you can put in the spreadsheet ID and you can put in your ranges here. So you see for batch get, there's multiple ranges. I did sheet one, A1, B1, and I'll do sheet one, A2, B2. And if I execute that, then it pulls up A1, B1, which is name and email, and then A2, B2, which is here, and B2 happened to be uh, no, there was nothing in it, so it didn't pull any information. But that is kind of the setup there. But if you notice, if I go to the values.get page and do the same thing at the bottom, you'll see that it's a lot less information. We've got range, major dimension, values, and then name and email, and that's it. Over here, we've got range, ma major dimension, and values, name and email, but above that, we have value ranges. And the reason for that is because there are multiple ranges that can be selected and each range is going to be its own index of an array. So this is important because once we get over to the code and we want to pull that data from the sheet and then display it, it's going to come into a different format than it did before. Whereas before it came into a single result dot values row column because of the result values row column. Now it's going to come into a result value ranges and then values and then row columns. So there's an additional layer there that was not present before. So I've already got the code here that I've built. I've already got the website up and running. And if I refresh this page, it's pulling information from my sheet. And the ranges that it's pulling is it's pulling A1, B1 and A3, B3. If I just wanted to select single cells, I could do that just as easily, but I just picked a couple. This is A1, B1, and then this is A3, B3. And I have it intentionally just displaying in the first and second rows. 
because honestly, for the purposes of this tutorial, it was easy and it gets the point across, but I used this code to do it. I'll kind of walk through that here in a minute, but if you wanted to have it display exactly where it displays in your Google Sheet, that's also possible. You'll just have to manipulate this a little bit so that it will pull and then save where it's at from the sheet and then push it to the sheet here in the proper places. But regardless, I'm pulling specific targeted data from different areas in the sheet here, and then I can change that easily by simply uh, selecting the range. Okay, so let's look at what this is doing. We've changed our get to a batch get. We've changed our range to ranges, and now we have an array of two ranges here. You can add as many as you'd like with commas in between. And then down below, I replaced the old populate sheets with a new populate sheets. And I built this here really quick just to make sure that it displays. And so what I've done is I've added an additional for loop. You see before, there was only two for loops. Now there's three. And the reason for that is value ranges is that top layer of our array that we need to consider here. So value ranges is another array. And then we've got values, which is an array. And then we've got each of the columns, which is also an array. So that's for loop, for loop, for loop. That's why there's three. So the first one will go for as many ranges as we need. So before I actually had it limited to three, but now I've actually, or, or eight, but now I've actually got it so that no matter how many ranges I put here, it's gonna loop the appropriate amount of times. So I say for each of the ranges that are returned in the result, then for each row, then for each column, display the data. And that's essentially, that's all this does really. It's, it goes through each of these and then it displays the data as it did before. But again, it has that additional layer of value ranges and then for each range, it's gonna loop through and then display the data. And that's it. So if you go back to this here and look under console, you see I've got the uh, pop or the console.log response.result. That's gonna show what it looks like in our console here. So if I expand this and I go to value ranges, I can see there's two value ranges. And again, that is our outside loop, meaning it's gonna go through it two times. And then here I've got our values. And now it looks a lot like it did before. And then I've got another array of name and email. And then here's our, our second one, values, another array, and then our name. So this is pretty much it. So the first thing you wanna do, of course, is make sure that you can pull the data properly here. After you're able to do that, then you want to use a console.log just to make sure that you're pulling the data and able to display it into your page down at the bottom. And then third, you can mess with the UI a little bit and how you want to do that. You can mess with the IDs of these cells. You can change the names so that they're appropriate to the particular range or however you want to do it. There, there are endless ways, but that should answer the question here, which was again, how do you select certain data to display? All right, cool. So uh, thanks for the question, Howbo. And if you have any more, if anybody else has questions, I'll do my best to get through these. And that is all. Have a good day. Bye.